when you sold for 30 million bucks, you were 17 years old. What was your big purchase? Are you rolling around London in a gold plated Bentley? What'd you buy? What happens when you make 30 million dollars at only 17 years old? That's exactly what happened to Australian programmer Nick D'Aloysio when he sold his app to Yahoo and became a millionaire overnight. We're going to be exploring how exactly he got there and how his life changed after becoming a millionaire at such a young age. As we'll see in the video, not everything was all positive. While all this might sound like an overnight success, the reality is that the journey to his success started when he was only 12 years old. As a kid, Nick had many interests. I was a very intense child. I was into astronomy and then painting and then finally I discovered this world where you could create apps and then launch them globally all from a computer. When the iPhone was first launched in June 2007, Nick was so excited and made sure that he was one of the first to build something on top of it. At only 12 years old, he decided to go all in and learning how to code for this new iPhone. This was going to be his first experience with coding. And this is a true story. I went into an Apple store, you know, yeah. one of the retail Retail stores a few days later and was like, I want to learn how to program. And, and one you were of how old? 12? 12, 12 years old. This is yeah. a true story. Five years and, ago. Yeah, yeah, and this is in London because that's, you know, that's where I live. Yeah. And the people at the retail store were like, we don't even know what a programming language is. <laughs> so I was a bit disheartened and I spent about six months kind of waiting for the App Store to go public. While no one in the App Store could help him with coding at the time, Nick decided to take things into his own hands. He went and picked up a book named Coding for Dummies. With this new book, he learned all the basics of programming all by himself. Then quickly learned some Objective-C to build his first iOS app. In that summer, he launched his first iOS app, Touchwood, which was one of the first 3,000 apps on the App Store. The application was just a virtual piece of wood you would touch for good luck. While the app was super simple, it still managed to make him a total of £79, which was more than $100 at the time. At only 12 years old, this was the first taste of success Nick experienced through technology and was definitely not his last. Nick continued on building and releasing a couple of more apps as a part-time hobby after school. Cool. Little did he know that one of the apps he was working on would change his life entirely. At 15 years old, Nick was working on an app called Trimit. It was an application to help him find information faster on the internet. More precisely, the app could summarize entire articles in just a few sentences. I was bored revising for my history GCSE. I thought, how can I make these long articles shorter? While it might not sound like the most exciting app today, it was pretty revolutionary at the time. But Nick didn't have time to take about it too much. It was just another app he was building in his collection. Though on his 16th birthday, Trimit got the attention of Lee Ka-shing, who is a multi-billion dollar investor from Hong Kong. The investor liked the app so much that he was willing to invest $300,000 into it. After some discussions, the deal went through and Nick became the youngest person ever to get an investment from a venture capitalist at only 16 years old. With a new influx of money in the bank, Trimit was redesigned and renamed to some it wasn't so long before other investors jumped on board like actor Stephen Fry and Aston Kutcher. I was just an intense kid who enjoyed being in the flow state of the creative process. Suddenly, I'm taking calls from billionaire investors and drinking tea at Yoko's house. Surreal. By the time Nick was 17, Sumly had millions of users. Now big players in the industry were all looking at this app. And this was the moment when Yahoo started paying attention to it. This was the moment where things would change forever for Nick Aloysius. In 2013, Yahoo decides to acquire Sumly for a whopping $30 million, making Nick one of the youngest self-made millionaires of all time at only 17 years old. Nick D'Aloysio went from being just a high school student to a real-life success story overnight. Now, what happens when a massive success story is centered around a 17 years old? Nick did a dozen of interviews everywhere and even had a chance to do a TED Talk. He even got interviewed by people. Pierce Morgan, who today is interviewing people like Cristiano Ronaldo. With this new sudden fame and having so much money at once, some may believe that this might have affected a 17 years old in a negative way. But in reality, it was quite the opposite, or at least that's what it seemed. I have to know, when you sold for 30 million bucks, you were 17 years old, what was your big purchase? Are you rolling around London in a gold-plated Bentley? What'd you buy? I'm not allowed to touch the money. My parents will have that. I mean, look, I've not done anything frivolous like that. Um, 
I've done a, you know, a little bit of investment, but at the end of the day, although it was nice to have that, obviously as part of the acquisition, my, my kind of my motivation behind that was always, I wanted scale for Samli, you know, I wanted to take it to millions of people. While Nick managed to keep his cool and stay humble during this newfound fame, if we dig deep enough, we can discover that even a person like him can suffer mentally from this life-changing experience. This is what he said during an interview. I'm not saying it happened too fast, but as an entrepreneur, if you taste success, you want it again and again after that. But the road gets tougher. But for now, Nick decided to focus back on his school. He also had the opportunity to join Yahoo as one of their youngest employees to help build the new app they acquired. Look, I found the last nine months at Yahoo to be really enjoyable because I didn't know what to expect. Like, it is my first full-time job technically. So, you know, I was the founder of Samli, I was in charge of that, but this is my first job and I've really enjoyed being in the mobile team because there's a lot of innovation, there's genuinely a lot of innovation coming out of Yahoo. With Yahoo's resources and his own skills, Nick and his team implemented some AI elements into the Assembly app. This created a new product called Yahoo News Digest, which became one of the most successful pieces of software that Yahoo ever released. And on top of that, the app also won an Apple Design Award in 2014. In 2015, at 19 years old, having newfound knowledge and working at a big company like Yahoo, Nick decided to leave and continue on his own. The next year, he settled to build a new company named Sphere. This would be a real-time chat application to get advice from experts instantly on any subject. It was supposed to be a love child of Google and WhatsApp, he says. Instead of just Googling, you'd be able to converse in real-time with an expert on any subject. This was it, a chance for another success story. Nick started getting the ball rolling again by securing investments for the company. It was reported that Nick raised about $30 million for this new venture. But unfortunately, Sphere wasn't an instant success like Sumly was. It didn't work. Some people asked stupid questions, what's the best fish? Other posted stupid answers. Then people started liking the stupid answers more than sensible ones or asking each other out on date. This was a very hard time for Nick. He had been used to the success of entrepreneurship so far, but not to the huge risk and failures that mostly comes with it. It came to a point where Nick had to seek mental health for this situation. I went to therapy and I'm so glad I did. I started meditating too. When I was 16, everything just went right, but that isn't sustainable. I had to change my relationship to risk and success. Therapy and meditating are very important to me now and I have way more respect for what entrepreneurship entails emotionally. After some time rethinking strategy, Nick decided to take his company's fear in a different direction. The company found a good balance and pivoted into something more manageable. It became a social Q&A website similar to Quora. This was probably the best thing they could have done because it managed to catch the eye of Twitter. In 2001, after a long battle trying to keep his company alive, Twitter came at the right time and decided to buy Nick's company, which the amount was never disclosed. There are plenty of reasons why acquisition is the best outcome for us, he says. Sphere going bust was a risk. Also, being CEO is exhausting and I want to get back into technical problem solving. The reality is that it takes more than just an entrepreneur with an idea. California's talent pool of engineers, designers, and financial shares is second to none. Twitter offers us a huge opportunity. After the acquisition, Nick received the deposit of millions of dollars in his bank account from Twitter. With all the stress now off his shoulders, Nick said, I'm not going bull you. Of course the money feels good, but the truth is the primary emotion was relief. I have staff and investors to take care of. Money is not the primary consideration for me at all. It seems that now Nick wants to take a step back a little from all the hustle and bustle. When a reporter asked him what's next for him, he said that now he wants time to start a relationship and have a family. Today at 27 years old, Nick is currently working at Twitter as a product lead and also finishing his PhD at Oxford University.